We're in Pittsburgh at Carnegie Mellon University, renowned worldwide as a robotics and technology hub. There's a building on CMU's campus where they rent out space to some of the largest and most influential technology companies in the world. Intel has space there, Apple has space there, and so does Disney. Disney Research Pittsburgh is where they experiment with technology that can be used in movies and in exhibits and at theme parks. Most of what they do at Disney Research in Pittsburgh is top secret, but they've been pretty open about something called Botanicus Interacticus, which is a plant embedded with sensors that can make music. We were curious about Botanicus Interacticus, so we invited our friends from the band Cloud Nothings to see if they could turn this experiment into an actual viable instrument. So this research, uh, Pittsburgh is a research laboratory, and we are part of the uh, Walt Disney Company. We invent technologies. So the foundation of, of the uh, Botanicus Interacticus project is called Swept Frequency Capacity Sensing that we invented here in Disney Research, which allows to make almost everything uh, humans, plants, objects, water, uh, you know, tables, uh, anything, interactive, touch sensitive, touch and gesture interactive with a single wire. All you need to do is to plug wire to something and it becomes interactive, right? So the Botanicus Interacticus is a part of the longer project which we're doing, which is um, creating technologies which allow us to add interactivity to the world, to the physical environment on a very large scale, right? We're all used to using mobile phones and, and tablets and computers, but it's always, you know, it's either in your hand or it's either in, in the, uh, on your table or in your lap. How can we make the entire world touch sensitive? How can we turn the entire world into the computer, right? That's kind of long-term vision that I've been um, working on for a few years. We have to use existing infrastructure, existing um, world, and add interactivity ad hoc. I see my goal as providing ingredients, right? I creating the basic ingredients which were not available before, and then I giving these ingredients to creators. Like this one, I think they're like different because this one, like as you go down, this one arpeggiates. That one, as you get closer from the, like. Flamingo guitar. I would try to like control it and play one note, but I think like sometimes, even just by moving a little bit closer to it, it would change the notes, even if your hand is in the same place. So it has less to do with where you're touching it and more where you are in relation to it. As you touch it, like just kind of like keeps changing. I'm an experimental electronic musician, and I uh, spend most of my time playing keyboards and synthesizers and working with computers. When you use a computer or a synthesizer or something like that, um, you usually have more control over the parameters and the way that things turn out and the plants sort of give you a bit of unpredictability, um, being that it's controlling the sound, which is uh, a lot more unusual, but also really kind of uh, unique and sort of special compared to other things that I've played before. It was definitely different. It wasn't like playing the drums. If there were ways to evolve some of the parameters in which you control the plant, so you have more control over the notes that are being played, how fast they're being played and at which rate they're being played and stuff like that, I think it'd be easier to use as an instrument. But right now it seems that it's still like a prototype. If you could be a little more accurate with it, mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually kind of similar to a, the way a theremin works, which is an old electronic instrument um, that tracks pitch depending on where your hand is. When the theremin first came out, it was more of just like a novelty thing. And then there are musicians like Clara Rockmore who got really good at playing the theremin and ended up playing classical pieces on them and sort of turning it into a really unique thing. So 
depends on what somebody does with it, I guess. I mean, it could remain how it is and be very primitive, but then you never know if somebody's gonna come along and master it and become the master plant conductor. It would take a lot of practice <laughs> yeah. to get good at the plant. <laughs> I think there are two kind of approaches to research right, in general. One approach is we have a problem and you're trying to solve it. Another way of research is technology opportunistic research. When you invent something, right, and then you, you know that by inventing that it's really, really powerful and it can, uh, it can be really, really useful and, and, and open a lot of opportunities, but you don't know what this opportunity is yet. So we, with this technology, we are in the process of discovery where it can be used. Interactive musical plants is one opportunity. Uh, smart doorknob is another opportunity. Uh, On-board electronics is a third opportunity, but the opportunities are endless.